collecting for the county orphanage? Sir? Merry Christmas, sir. Ma'am, collecting for the county orphanage? Thank you very much, ma'am. Merry Christmas to you. Ma'am, collecting for the county orphanage? I don't have any change. But will this do? That's fine. Thank you, ma'am. Merry Christmas to you. In almost two weeks. Yes, yes, I know. I, I promise to speak to him, and I will. No, I will. But the moment has to be right, or... If he even knew I was talking with you now, I'm going to be late. Mr. Thatcher, it means life or death to us. I know. for the county orphanage. Thank you very much, sir. Westward leading still. Sir, back for the county orphanage. Here you are. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Merry Christmas to you, too, sir. Mr. Slade wouldn't be in by any chance, would he? Well, um, Mr. Slade is very busy. That time of year, payments due accounts receivable. But if... If you sent him a letter, I, I'm sure he'd... Ridiculous, Thatcher. Of course I want to see the orphanage kids. Let them in. Wonderful children. Just wonderful. I see you've been practicing. Yes, sir. On that new piano, sir, it sure is a beauty. We won't talk about the piano right now, will we? On the other hand, I'm sure that a holiday gift would not be objected to. <laughs> yes, right. I had these printed at my own expense. One for you, and one for you. You're going to learn how the great men of this country, self-made men, did it all on their own. Morgan, Coolidge, Zebulon Pike, climbed that mountain hand over hand, never asked for anything. Thrift, hard work, pay your bills on time, maybe you'll have a mountain of your own someday. Remember, don't rest on your laurels, it breeds decay. Don't dawdle. Bye-bye, thanks for coming. Hi. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, it's a pleasure. I like to help young people. Bye-bye. Hey, come on. Mr. Slade thinks he's really doing us a favor, you know? I mean, he really believes it. So, let's all show our appreciation for him, huh? I believe we have some visits to make. Yes, sir. You have the papers ready? Yes, sir. They're all here. Here, sir. Truck full of gas. Joe checked everything out. Mr. Slate, just a couple of months. I think we can make the payments. You think you could? Don't beg him, Jenny. He has come to do what the law allows. Nothing we can say or stop. Thatcher. Sir? Uh, repossession order. Merrimack County Court.
gentlemen. Give this to Mr. Jessup. He'll understand. Yes, sir. Memories, Mr. Slade. Well, it would be only natural. Well, place hasn't changed much since you were a boy. May I remind you, sir, that I lived here for a year. I, I bet you remember a lot during that year. Under a year. Ball games at Webster Park, chestnuts at holiday meals, and caroling on yes, the streets. Yes, I know. They Christmas. came to my office this morning. Now, can we get down to business? Business? Yes. I'm afraid our situation hasn't changed very much. Well, I'm very sorry to hear that, Jessup. You shouldn't have gotten in over your head. But we needed a piano. After 42 years, the old one fell apart. We had no choice. Neither do I. Such. Such. Repossession order. Merrimack County Court. Chaucer mixed in with Plato and Socrates. Can you imagine that? When did you change your stock? Change it? I advanced you $5,000 for university shop. To me, that means sweaters, bow ties, ukuleles. To me, it means wisdom, Mr. Slade. With all your wisdom, have you found a way to pay your debt? Well, not all of it, but you can take all the money I have. That will. Plus, you're stuck for liquidation. Scrap paper, penny a pound, huh? Better than nothing. Thatcher. Oh. Attachment order, Merrimack County Court. Is this genuine leather? It's Morocco. Yeah, it feels good. Oh, don't don't be a few dollars in this after all. Take everything that's leather, we'll rip them apart at the warehouse. Yeah. Oh, not that one, sir. Please, above all, not that one. Why not? Well, it's an original edition of Mr. Charles Dickens. It was given me by my father, who got it from his grandfather, who was a friend of Mr. Dickens. It must be protected. Oh, Mr. Merrivale, you don't need books. You make up wonderful stories by yourself. Don't forget the rest in here. Wonderful piece of goods. Bring it over here. 
Joe, make sure the garage is double locked before you go home. Yes, sir. Merry Christmas, Joe. Thatcher, I need a little assistance with the bindings here. Don't just stand there. Are you having some difficulty with your hearing? It's Christmas, sir. Perhaps... Can we talk a moment, Mr. Slade? What on earth for? Well, it's about the town, sir. It's about the times that we're going through. I know all about the times we're going through, so get to the point. Well, uh, when there were... When there was uh, money to sp When the quarry was being worked... Well, that couldn't possibly be the point. The quarry has been closed for a year. Ah, uh, no, that's just the point, sir. Now, the men who work there, now, they've had a wonderful idea, and they've asked me to be the spokesman. So what? Well, well, Mr. Slade, since you own so much of the town, if anybody could open up the quarry again, it'd be you. Well, a man of your means... Why would I want to open a, a business that's failed? Because there's hope for the future in it, sir. Well, in the things that Mr. Roosevelt is doing, new roads, new dams, new public buildings, there's sure to be a need for granite again. Well, if you think that's true, Thatcher, then why don't you open it yourself? You should at least hear me, sir. These men have nothing left. Rebellion? Oh, no, no. If the quarry were opened up again, sir, Everyone would benefit. There'd be more business in the town. There'd, there'd be more money to spend. I mean, it would be prosperous for you, Mr. Slade. Your debtors could pay you on time, and then you wouldn't have... No, go on and say it. I wouldn't have to what? Put a gun to their heads, take their Victrolas and their lovely couches and leave them in empty houses? Oh, you really do hate me, don't you, Thatcher? No, sir. Yes, sir. I see it in those eyes every time we go out in the truck, making me out to be some kind of monster for taking what's rightfully mine. Let me tell you something, Thatcher. A man who is as soft as an old shoe is generally of little worth. Always taking the debtor's side. You hold on to those repossession papers like they were stuck to your fingers. And now you're trying to teach me business. Sir, I only... You only conspire with a gang of quarry rats to take some money out of me. I don't need to learn business from you. I learned it from the best. Jack Latham, the smartest businessman this state ever knew. Until now. Do you know what he said to me on his deathbed? He said, Ben, never throw good money after bad. And never pay a man one penny more than he's worth. So you go back and you tell your quarry workers that their ranks of the unemployed have just been increased by one. Oh, no, sir, I didn't mean... I don't want to see your face anymore, Thatcher. Get out. Just get my things. Yes, you do that. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Oh, hi, honey. Mm. Oh, I'm glad you're home. You okay? Yep. Christmas tree all decorated. Mm-hmm. 
Well, 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 look at this activity now. But where's my Mr. T? Here's my Sarah. Who turned off the lights? Now, who would this be underneath my coat? Who is underneath my coat? It's Jonathan Thatcher! Hey! How have you been today? Fine. Why'd you bring these things home from the office? Would you excuse me a moment? I'm going to talk to your mother. Rendition of Angels We Have Heard on High. Now, as a special Christmas Eve presentation, please. I would like to read you a portion of the now famous letter that appeared in the editorial pages of the New York Sun in 1890. We need to talk. Darkness is cheap, and he liked it. But before he shut the heavy door, he walked through the rooms to see that all was all right. Sitting room, bedroom, lumber room, all as they should be. <laughs> then there was a clanking noise deep down below, as if some person were dragging a heavy chain over the casks in the cellar. He remembered that ghosts in haunted houses were described as dragging chains. Claptrap. This is an emergency. I'm Benedict Slade, 429 Front Street. I seem to have lost all of my power in my warehouse. Operator? Operator?
All right, come out this minute. I know someone's here. I've got a gun. Oh, come on, Ben. You wouldn't shoot your old partner, would you? Who are you? You know damn well who I am. I know who you want me to think you are. You're on the right track. He's dead. Right again? Now, there's some trick being played here. And I know what it is. Shrewd as ever, eh, Ben? Makeup. It took six pounds of powder and paint to make that actor look like Frankenstein. That's what they said in the paper. And that's what you used makeup to make yourself look like Latham, Mr. Whoever you are. Then if I'm not Latham, I wouldn't know things only you and Latham knew? Like what? Like telling the Reverend Williams his antique deacon's bench was only a cheap reproduction so you could snatch it up as collateral and make a profit. Shall I go on? Jack? Jack. But you're... Dead. Don't be afraid to say it. It's only a state of mind. That is, two states. I'm in the larger one. Hello? But you don't look... Uh... Hell's not what you think it is. Fire, sulfur, devils with pitchforks, none of that. Thank God. It's worse. It's living in all your past, all the time, forever. There's a politician who sits in a room with all his speeches blaring at the same time. No earplugs, either. And a king who has to keep staring at the faces of many sent to war. Yeah, but you're a businessman, a very good one. You drive a hard bargain, but you've never done anything evil. Evil's not just what you do. It's what you don't do. Each day, each man has a thousand chances. But they're missed forever once they put you in the ground. But you, you can still make changes, Ben. And I'm going to help you. Don't go out of your way for me there, Jack. You're going to get three more visitations. Ghosts? Oh, that storybook, Doc. I think of them as conductors on the Boston Main Line. And you better go where they take you. Look for them, Ben. Look for them. Jack. Jack. Don't leave me now, Jack. I've got a million questions to ask you. Jack. Where are you? must have been the cheese. It must have gone off when I didn't realize it. It's just a slight touch of indigestion, that's all. <laughs> it's too quiet in here, that's the problem. Ladies and gentlemen, as reported earlier, the stock market has taken a severe plunge and investors Again? seem convinced that the market is headed for certain disaster. We are standing by for a statement from President Hoover. He will speak to the oh, nation on the President. state of the American economy. Roosevelt. Our microphones are set us. up in the Oval Office of the White House, where Mr. Hoover is about to begin his address. Sources close to the White House say that Damn Mr. Hoover will about. attempt to convince the American people... 
He's climbing out of the cockpit now. He throws back his goggles and jumps to the ground. Listen to that crowd. And who can blame them on this glorious day of 1927 when Charles A. Lindbergh has become the first man to fly the Atlantic Ocean? I'm sorry, that was six years Lindbergh ago. Have waited for hours to greet the lost the mind. With the warmest welcome afforded an American citizen. Nice instrument. I played a trumpet in a war a long time ago. You should have seen those walls come down. How'd you get in here? You make it sound as if I'd been away. The past is always nearby, especially here. I suppose you're going to tell me now that you are the, the spirit of Christmas past? You said it, not I. It's not going to work, you know. I know who you are, so why don't you just go back to your little silly bookstore, Maryville? Not much of a bookstore anymore. I said get out. Outside. All right. Outside. What are you doing? What's going on here? Had enough? Yes, I've had enough. Thank you very much. Get me back inside. Sorry to be so dramatic, but you did bring it on yourself. Jack said visitation's not freezing to death. What is it you want? The past wants only to be remembered. I remember the past very well without your help. Thank you. Do you remember it, really? Or just those parts you pick out for yourself? Do you know this place? I know this place. The county orphanage. I guess we've come to a costume party. Guess again. Well, people have been dressed like this for 40 years. You're getting warmer. They're coming, they're coming. Boys, get ready. Everyone, get ready. Ah, here comes Mrs. Tidings. She runs the place. No, nope, it's impossible. She's dead. She wasn't when you were here. They're the best of the lot, Mr. Brewster. Well behaved, intelligent, deserving. That's excellent, Mrs. Tidings, excellent. Of course, uh, whoever we choose for our apprentice will have to be able to learn the business from the ground up. Oh, I'm sure every one of these boys would be more than satisfactory. Who's that at the back of the room? Oh, that's Benedict Slade. Where? He hasn't been here very long. When his parents died, he was passed around among aunts and uncles. Then they turned him over to us. So skinny. Why didn't you feed me better? How is he with his hands? He fights a lot. Has he ever used tools? No. Oh, more from anger than skill. Well, at least that's a beginning. Oh, Mr. Brewster, I don't think you'd be advised to take that boy. Excuse me, Mrs. Tidings. I'd much rather do something for someone who needs rather than someone who just wants. You please bring him over to us, would you? Thank you. Ah! Looks like Mrs. Tidings convinced you. Yes, yes, she always. Thank you, Roy. 
Down you get, lad. Don't keep him here too long, Nathaniel. Remember, dinner is five o'clock sharp. We'll be there. Come on, boy. Now, your job will be to look after pieces of machinery like that, and keep them clean, keep them oiled. Of course, you'd have to uh, dust off all the furniture back there in the showroom, too. And let's see what else. Well, sweep up at the end of the day. You can see how much we need that. The most important thing, every minute you get, you watch the craftsmen. See what it is they do and how they do it. Before you know it, you might have a bench of your own. Do you think you'd like that? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You imbecile. Anybody can see this is a thriving business. I'm trying to offer you an opportunity, young man. Well, you can give it to someone else. Oh. It must have been very rough on you, Ben. Very painful for you, losing your parents like that. And then being shifted around from relative to relative. Every time you start feeling close to someone, they move you on, huh? I guess after a while, it just seems better not to get too close to anyone. And it doesn't hurt so badly when you have to leave. How could he look inside me like that? How do you know how I felt? If you want to be my apprentice, you can move right in with my family and you'll never have to move until you want to. I want to leave now. Well, that's up to you. Do you know what that is? Sure I do. It's a stick. A stick? Is that all you see here? Is it? Oh, you're not as bright as I thought you were. This is anything that I wanted to be. That could be a, a magician's wand for doing tricks. Or it uh, could be the handle of a whip for taming wild lions. But I could make that into the spoke of a ship's wheel that can lead you to all kinds of new lands and new adventures. I could even carve that into a flute. And then I could play it to charm all those folks in old Hamlin Town. Here, that can be anything you want it to be. Unless, of course, you're too dumb to see anything but a stick there. she was. There's quite a lot you've forgotten. of finish instead of three, we can reduce oh. production by a day. You haven't heard one thing I've said. Sure I have. I've been listening. Have you? Yeah. Then you know how I was talking about the park, nature. Do you like nature, Ben? Yeah. Would you like to get really close to it? I mean really close. Would you? Yeah. Good! <laughs> oh, ow! Oh, you're gonna pay for that. <laughs> What did 
your father say? Oh, I thought you weren't listening. You see, don't underestimate me, <laughs> Helen. Well, I told him. No finishing school for me. No anything that would take me away from... from Concord. Yeah? I'm sure after all that that you really want to get your breath back, so we're going to give out some gifts. Oh! oh. Sam? Sam Perkins. Sam! Sam Perkins. Hey. There's a message, Sam. <laughs> what every foreman needs at home. <laughs> uh, Essie! Where is Essie? Ah, thank you. Thank you, Miss Brewster. Thank you very much. What in the world have we here? To the Brewster family and all their employees, the future. <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> I guess we'll cut in and hope for the best. Huh? <laughs> hope I'm not damaging whatever it is. <laughs> Stapleton Furniture Company, Grand Rapids, Michigan. <laughs> I guess the joke's on me. <laughs> That's not a joke, Mr. Brewster. Oh, did you bring this, Ben? Yes, sir, I did. What? <laughs> I, believe, I believe that chair is the future, and I think it can help us all if we're smart enough to use it. Oh, no. Oh, right. Oh, How? That chair is not made the same way that we make ours. It's made on the assembly line. Oh, oh, that's right, that's right. They're starting to use the assembly line now in furniture. Some fellow puts on one part, another fellow puts on another. They're all made by machinery. They can no. sell that no. chair for one half the price of one that we put out. Yeah, hey, but look how it's made. Nails instead of pegs, bad fittings, all slosh with glue to keep them together. You call that a chair like ours? <laughs> <laughs> there are millions of people who won't know the difference. They'll... Yes, they will. Excuse me. They'll just look at the price tag and that's the one that they'll buy. Oh, I, I can't accept that, man. <laughs> no. no, when the day of quality ends in this country, we'll all be in great trouble indeed. Here, here. <laughs> What did you get in your, your gift there? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My boy, oh, love him. Your boy, so will your wife. <laughs> oh, and as ever, here, Sam, a bonus check. Ben! Ben, that wasn't very polite. Go inside, Helen, it's raining. So they disagreed with you. Is that such a terrible thing? You think I'm angry because he disagreed with me? That's not what? it, Helen. That's not it at all. I'm sorry for your father. I feel sorry for everyone that works for him. They're going to be passed by, and that's what I don't want to happen. Ben, then come to dinner tonight and explain yeah, it to him again. Do it for me, Ben, please. <laughs> did, did you get a look at Sam Perkins' face when he lifted out those boxing... <laughs> Oh, that <laughs> he almost poor man. swallowed his cigar. <laughs> Mr. Brewster? <laughs> yes, sir. I know that bringing in that chair this afternoon was a smart aleck act. And I deeply apologize. Oh, Ben, that's all right. I know you meant well. 
I still do, sir. Whether you like it or not, mass production is coming in. In order to survive, you've got to start thinking about it. Well, I never will, Ben. I never could. I guess I'm uh, too old and too stubborn to change. <laughs>